if you take a look at just in general looking at the boat, you notice it's very different than the boats that we're normally using with the Fairwind. What's one of the main huge differences? It's, it's a catamaran. catamaran. Two holes. Yeah, it's a catamaran, right? So that, that complicates <laughs> things. <laughs> makes it more difficult to steer. It's bigger. It can only be on an end cap. Uh, so it's more exposed to marine traffic, people bumping into it. So it's important for us when we're approaching the boat that we take a general to see that there's nothing out of place that can pose a safety threat to you or your crew or other property or its own self, right? So <clears throat> when we walk here, we notice that the screecher was slack, which means either the halyard was loosened or there's something going on with the bowsprit. But generally, you want to make sure that the boat on a overall doesn't look out of place. If you have two pontoons, you have the trampoline, the catwalk, the bridge, the... <clears throat> there's no dolphin striker, but there's like that we call the seagull striker. All those components, the diamond formation of the shrouds. It's familiarity is what we really are learning. You know, like there's a lot of different systems. Um, like the head, you know, is very simple, but different. And when we go through the boat, we're all gonna be learning together. The more I'm on it, the more I'm getting familiar with it. And that's really why the, 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 the learning curve is gonna be steep because it's a film, familiarity issue. There's just a lot of different things that we've never had in the club. But the, the boats, once you start to get familiar with it, it's very, very user friendly in my opinion. So the first thing we're gonna do is open the boat and the containment covers will go underneath the port helm in a little storage area. Where do we keep the locks? Um, put them on the handles of the Companionway sliders. This is basically a standard winch. It's a power winch. Okay. So this is fast and this is slow. And what we found is that when we're raising the main, uh, if you get your crew to one person to tail and another person to jump, when they're jumping the line, the easiest way to get the main up. It's just to go like this, put your weight on. So if if you weigh 110 pounds, you just basically get up and step down. You don't have to use your arm strength. Just hold on and use your weight. So you don't need to be, you know, like really, really, you don't have to be like a 200 pound, you know, real arms to be able to raise this thing. It's all technique. You can get it up about 99% of the way. And then at the very end, you basically streamline as your main halyard. But let's say this is your halyard. Okay. So basically at the very end, it's pleated off. You can just bring it up the last four or five feet using the power winch. Now, there's a couple of safety issues about the power winch. Um, one is that inside there's a pin, and with the pin, which is, which is up in the up position right now, if you try to use the winch handle without pushing that pin down, it's locked and it cannot spin. That's a safety issue. If you push one of these buttons, this winch handle will spin around and hurt somebody. It can spin like or it will fly off and hit somebody. Ooh, see that? Yeah. Break your arm? Yeah. <laughs> or go in the ocean. So basically, we recommend that you do not use this winch handle to assist or help at the same time. Now, if there's no power to this, which we've had issues with, where the, the breaker, the circuit breaker, which is tied into the engine, has popped and we could not get the winch to work and we couldn't get the engines to start, then you might want to use a bypass to use the winch handle. You have to push the pin down by pushing the winch handle all the way down, then this will work. Okay? Did you have to flip the red lever to do that? Um, <coughs> it's a little sticky, so that's why I'm okay. playing with it. Okay. Um, but again, you only need to use this winch, this manual winch, if the power goes out and for emergency purposes. Otherwise, don't even use this thing. Now, do you need to have the engine or generator running in order no. to operate the winch? Uh, yes. Okay. You want to have the engines running, which you normally will have okay. because you're motoring at the same time you're raising the sails. Yep. So your engine is already running 
and you would like to have it at a fast idle just to keep the circuit, the, the electricity pumping the, the, the batteries. What, what we did the first time, which was uh, kind of like, which blew the circuits, was that we were really enthusiastic. We used the power winch to raise the whole, the whole sail, and it, the, the engine, the, the winch got labored. Uh, we were burning a lot of electricity, and at the very last two or three feet, there was such a powerful draw on it, and the circuit breaker got so hot that the circuit breaker popped, and that's how we lost power. So you do have a winch handle. Um, so like right now it's locked, you can't get it out, so it's kind of safe, and it's actually popped up, and it, it is spinning around. So that's why you don't want to have um, to use the power and at the same time using this. To get it out, press this button, and it pops out.